Hello everyone, my name is Rachel. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I'm in a whole new filming setup because I just moved. So I am living in a house all by myself, which actually makes me very happy because I'm an introvert. And so yeah, now I'm just getting settled in here. I'm trying to figure out the ideal place to film here. I like this setup. This is actually the guest bedroom. The bedspread makes me very happy. It's very bright in here, but at the same time, it's not Christmassy at all. <laughs> so yeah, I also need to get Christmas decorating in order, but yeah, so that's what's going on. Today, I'm here to bring you guys my December TBR. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the books that I plan on reading in December. Um, if you guys recall last week, I made a video called my Christmas romance TBR where I talked about all the contemporary Christmas romances that I want to read this holiday season. Um, so a lot of those books I also want to read in December and then I'm also <laughs> making a completely separate video about the historical romance readathon that is being hosted by Jess from Peace Love Books, Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers, and Lisa from Remarkably Lisa. Um, and so that video will be all about the historical romances that I want to read specifically for that readathon and I think I'm also going to give you guys recommendations as well. So those two videos are going to cover most of what I'm planning on reading in December but I also have some miscellaneous books that I want to read throughout the month. So without further ado let's just kind of jump into it. Uh, the first couple of books that I want to talk about actually are books that I plan on rereading because these books in particular I read earlier this year absolutely loved them but I'm still not quite sure where I want to put them in my ranking of the best books of 2021. So I thought that rereading them would help clarify that for me. Um, so the first one I definitely want to reread is Thief of Shadows by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is book four in her Maiden Lane series. And uh, this is basically Batman in Georgian era London. <laughs> um, it's so amazing. And we have Winter who is a virgin hero and he runs this orphanage in St. Giles which is a very poor neighborhood in London. And then we have Isabel who's a widow and she kind of has to make over Winter so that he looks like a proper London gentleman for potential donors for this orphanage. And so it's a little bit of a Pygmalion or My Fair Lady plotline as well. So yes, I definitely loved this book the first time that I read it and I hope that rereading it will help clarify things for me <laughs> in terms of my favorite books of the year. Another book that I want to reread for the same purpose is actor A.G. Brown. I read an e-arc of this back in early March and I recall reading my Goodreads review about this book and I said that so many parts of this book made me squeal with delight and there is still a sex scene from this book that I can still vividly remember. So um, yeah, again, I'm hoping that rereading this will help clarify for me where exactly I wanna put this in my ranking of like my top favorite romance novels of the year. So next up we have A Moment in Time by Beatrice Small. This is an old school historical romance. This is the December pick for the Historical Hellions Book Club, which is run by Jess from Peace Love Books and Samantha from Books with Samantha. I'm going to be a part of that live show this month, which is so exciting. I always love being a part of live shows that Jess either does just randomly for her channel or for this book club specifically. I've always just had a really fun time. I can't really tell you what this book is about. I read the synopsis and I feel like most of the synopsis is kind of spoilery. Um, so I purposefully haven't reread that synopsis recently so that I can still go into this book relatively blind. I remember though that this has to do with like past lives and like reincarnation I believe. That's all I can tell you but I'm really looking forward to reading this because it just sounds like something that's really really unique for a historical romance. And then another historical that has nothing to do with Christmas or anything like that, which is why I'm not featuring it in my historical romance readathon TBR video. Um, that is My American Duchess by Eloisa James. This is the December pick for the Rake Appreciation Society, which is a book club run by Jen from the Book Refuge and Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life. This is a book that has been on my radar for a while. I featured this in my five star predictions video. If you're curious, I'll link that up in the cards above. And this is about Mary and Trent. Uh, Mary is an American heiress. She's been engaged at least twice. Yes, twice at this point. Those engagements ended. She's now engaged for the third 
time. Meanwhile, Trent, who is a duke, um, he like falls head over heels in love with Mary. But Mary doesn't want to end yet another engagement. She already has a lot of scandal and gossip surrounding her. And so it sounds like there's a lot of angst. And I've just heard nothing but phenomenal things about this book. And then let's see the other two physical books I have. Both of these books were featured in my 21 books I want to read in 2021 video. I will link that up in the cards above as well. This is so exciting because these are literally the last two books that I have to read to complete that list. Um, and so the first one is King of Scars. Ooh, this is a reflective cover. My goodness. King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. This is book one in a duology that takes place after the events of the Grisha trilogy and the Six of Crows duology. This uh, in particular follows Nikolai, who is now the king of Ravka. And I'm excited going into this, but I'm also wary because I need to look up <laughs> how much I need to remember <laughs> from those other two series before going into this book because I read the Six of Crows duology like in early 2020 and I read the Grisha trilogy in early 2019. So I remember pretty much nothing from those books. So maybe I'll read some like recaps or something because I definitely don't want to have to reread all of those books <laughs> before jumping into this. Um, but I've heard pretty good things about this first book and this duology in general. So really looking forward to that. And then the other book that was also a part of that 2021 list is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Again, another really reflective cover. Um, and this is a YA sci-fi I thought that this would be a great way to jump into Brandon Sanderson. This is about Spencer who wants to be a pilot in the military. She lives on another planet, so it's definitely sci-fi. Um, but her father was also a pilot in the same military and I believe he defected and so there's a lot of scandal surrounding her and her family. I think the third and final book is already out and there are also novellas coming out that are part of this series as well. So that's really cool. Next up, I have two novellas. This first one, I somehow completely forgot to talk about in my Christmas romance TBR video. I'm so mad. So I'm gonna mention it here. That is The Naughty List by Ellie Mae McGregor. This is a Santa romance. <laughs> There you have it. And the heroine is a single mom. And that sounds fantastic. I have read a novella by Ellie Mae McGregor before. It's called The Witch's Wolves. And I really enjoyed that. So I think I'm going to have a fun time with this one as well. And then the other novella that I really want to get to in December is Party Favors by Erin McClellan. This is a part of her So Over the Holidays novella series. I've read two novellas in this series so far. She actually has one called Stocking Stuffers, which is a Christmas romance romance novella, which I highly, highly, highly recommend. It was really great. I read that one last year. Um, but this one, however, is a New Year's Eve romance, and it's also a sapphic romance. So it is a female, female romance. And that's all that I know. That's all that I need to know. I'm already just such a huge fan of Erin McClellan after reading three of her novellas at this point. Um, so yeah, this one just sounds like a fun time. Next up, we have Well Matched by Jen DeLuca. This is also a book that I featured in my five star predictions video. So this is book three in her Well Met series, which is a companion romance series that centers around this small town and the Renaissance fair that they host every summer. Every time I read one of these books, it makes me crave going to a Renaissance fair. I need to make that happen. Like, where are the Renaissance fairs in my area? I need to find that out. But this one I'm so, so, so excited about because I loved book one. I enjoyed book two. It wasn't great because there was like a catfish situation going on. This one, however, is about April, who is the sister of the heroine from book one, and then Mitch, who's kind of like the opposite of April in a lot of ways. I think this gives me like grumpy sunshine vibes with April being kind of the grumpy one. This also has fake dating because Mitch is going home for some kind of event and he wants to be taken more seriously by his family. And so uh, he gets April to agree to be his fake girlfriend and things go on from there. I didn't know that this was fake dating until I recently read the synopsis. I was going to go into this blind, but now that I know that it's fake dating, I'm even more excited. Next up, we have Lady Daring Takes a Lover by Julie Ann Long. I have been meaning to check out this author and this series in particular because this is her most recent series. I actually got approved for the e-arc of 
the latest installment of this series, which is actually about an opera singer and a duke, I believe, which that's really exciting. And the cover looks very Christmassy. Um, so I might have to read that during the historical romance readathon. We'll just have to see. But this is the first book of that series. I've actually heard amazing things about this book from my friend Dana, but I haven't really heard anybody else talk about really this author or this book in particular. But it sounds like a really fun plot. We have Lady Daring, our main character. She is a countess. She is a widow and her husband I guess just left her a bunch of money and so she was able to open this boarding house which it sounds like that's always kind of been her dream job and it sounds like her husband was not a very good husband to her um, now she's just very happy to just be free um, and back in those days you definitely had more freedoms as a widow than as a single unmarried woman and then we have Tristan our hero he's a naval war hero and he tracks a smuggler to this boarding house that Lady Daring owns and so it just sounds like this is going to be really fun. Um, the vibe just sounds kind of like a Tessa Dare novel maybe to me. I don't know. We will just have to see. I hope that I really enjoy this and um, I hope that I have found a new favorite historical romance author. Next up we have Sinner. This is yet another book that I featured in my five star predictions video. This is a companion novel to Priest which was a book that I read this past month I did not expect to love it, but I absolutely did. And as you can tell, that's a priest romance. But this one is about our main character, who's the brother of the hero from Priest. Um, and then I think this is a romance with a woman who is preparing to be a nun. So obviously very taboo. I adore Sierra Simone's writing. I love the way that she tackles these religious topics in a romance novel. And last but certainly not least, I have You've Reached Sam by Justin Tao. Um, I got an e-arc of this off of NetGalley and the audiobook is going to come in really soon from my Libby app. And the plot of this one reminds me of Landline by Rainbow Rowell a little bit. Basically, uh, we have Julie and Sam. Um, their boyfriend and girlfriend, they're both 17 years old. Sam unexpectedly dies. And so to hear his voice one more time, she just calls his voicemail. Um, but it turns out that Sam actually picks up the phone. So yeah, that sounds really freaking cool. Um, but also like something that is going to punch me in the gut and make me cry, which, you know, every now and then I'm in the mood for a book to make me cry. So I'm really looking forward to this one and the cover is absolutely stunning. So that's going to be it for this December TBR. Um, as you can tell, I have a very ambitious TBR for this month, given that I want to read all of the books featured in this video, as well as two other videos. So I don't know who I am that I think I'm going to read like 60 books in December, but here we are. I would love it if you would leave a comment down below telling me about the books that you want to read in December. And I would also love it if you would leave a like and subscribe. And I thank you so, so much in advance if you do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.